pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for peace and prosperity for the city that we love. We hope that you give us strength and wisdom to make wise and prudent decisions for this city. We also pray for the lost ones, and uh, we also pray for Lori, who is our city clerk, Devaney. She is unfortunately lost her husband, and we pray that she is well and she is okay. In your name we pray, amen. Okay. Approval of the agenda. Do we have any amendments to the agenda? None? I make a motion to approve the agenda. Motion to approve. Second. Second by Brent. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, item D, citizen comments. Anybody from the audience that would like to come up and speak for three minutes? probably remember me from my argument on 321 North Pine um, rezoning issue, trying to make it a multifamily property. Um, you guys voted against that, and thank you again. However, since then, um, the owner has not taken care of the property. Um, my The neighbor on the other side has mowed it three times and now nothing has been done to it since April. Um, weeds are getting pretty bad, pretty tall. Um, as you can see by the photos, how tall they are, they're growing into my fence. Uh, I think there's 10 photos in there. Um, I also took pictures of the both adjacent properties showing that we, myself and Kyle, keep our yards up and um, this landowner is not. Um, I understand he doesn't live here in Goddard. He lives in Wichita, so I, logistics, he doesn't you know, probably want to come out and mow an empty lot. But it's starting to look really bad, it's starting to make the neighborhood look bad. There are some noxious weeds in there, thistle, um, which is a very invasive plant, um, will kill other native um, Kansas plants. Um, so my, I've lived here for 30 years and I've received citations, notices from the city saying my tree limbs were going out into 3rd Street and I had to cut them. I had three trees in the alley that were too tall and one was dead and I had to take care of them. As a responsible homeowner, I did. I took care of them. So I think he needs to uphold the same things that the homeowners hold, you know, are held to standards to keep their properties up. Um, I do know somebody who would be interested in mowing it if you need somebody, or if he doesn't want to come out and do it. Um, if you do have his contact information, I also know someone who's interested in purchasing the property if he's interested in selling. Um, this person has reached out to him twice and hasn't heard back. So, but I'm curious, is has he been cited, notified, or anything that his yard? I don't know, um, to be honest with you, Mike, are you aware? Yeah, we cited it. We just have to send him a letter, but it was cited last week, so. Okay. It, everyone's got, once, <clears throat> once, we not once we're notified or we drive by and see it, we just take a picture. And then we send somebody a letter, and it goes to the owner, of course. If it's a rental property, it still goes to the owner, whoever's the owner of record. And then once they receive it, it's got to be certified. So once they receive it, they have seven days upon receipt of the letter. If they never receive the letter, then they have 14 days. And so no matter what, I mean, 
this happens a lot, especially in the rainy season, because the city is not, we don't, we're not property management, right? We're not going to proactively go around and mow people's properties or say, hey, your grass is seven and a half inches tall, it's almost eight, right? And so we're only ever going to get notified when it's actually in violation, because that's our job at that point. We, we don't do it proactively. So, and then of course, everybody would want it to be remediated immediately, but by our own municipal law, we have to kind of abide by it. Right. So then we give them seven days certified, because the problem is, the, the problem is is that if people don't do it, then we do it. We do have a mowing compliance team, and then they'll go out and mow it. And then if they don't pay the bill, they have 30 days to pay the bill. So if we mow it, so that, okay, so you got 14 days now. And so then if they don't mow it in 14 days, we mow it, and then we send them a bill. Then they have 30 days to pay that bill. If they don't pay that bill in 30 days, then we put a lien on the property. So since we're putting a lien on the property, there's a lot of regulation that we have to abide by. So unfortunately, it's not cut and dry, yeah. no pun intended, but, uh, no, but uh, well, well, yeah, yeah, it doesn't get done immediately, but right. we do sympathize, believe me, because we, I'm sure everybody hates wasting taxpayer dollars to drive around and tell people, hey, common sense should dictate you mow your grass, you know what I mean, so, but yeah, we have, we've flagged it. Okay, that's, that's we'll all I just wanted to make sure was you guys were aware Yeah, of it. We'll, we'll send them the, the I'm green sorry, letter. could you state your name and address? Oh, I'm her? sorry, Melissa mm -hmm. Silver, okay. 327 North Pine. Thank you. Yep. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Ms. Hillerman. Anybody else? is a problem for discussion from Blake today. Uh, we're not here to argue that point because we know something needs to be done. But we're, what we're upset about is going to take five minutes to come talk to us. Because if you had, you would know we already have plans to fix the problem this summer. But we couldn't do it before that. But if you give us your citation, I don't know if we'll have it done within the allotted amount of time of 45 days. So I'm just asking that you don't give us a citation, give us some time to get it done because plans are already in progress. And uh, the other issue is, do we have a compliance officer? Yes, that's me. Okay, I need to talk to you then about what we can and can't do. Can and can't do in the city limits? Yes. Oh, sure, let's have that conversation. Okay, so when the needs done, or should I make an appointment to you? Yeah, well, I'm in my office from 8 to 4.30, Monday through Friday. If you want to come tomorrow, it's going to be a long meeting, so it's probably better if you come in tomorrow. Okay. But yeah, 8 to 4.30, I'm right down the hallway. Okay, so I will get, but I just ask that you don't issue citations for us, because we already have plans in motion. Okay. Thank you. 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 Next up. Are you in the truck hall 410 Richards Road? Um, I just want to make a comment on the North Park material removal and salvage. Um, reading over that, I would like the council to consider, please, uh, repurposing the windmill and the water pump as um, just like a feature for the community garden, um, just something to kind of um, maintain the old fill and be able to repurpose that versus selling it or salvage it or, you know, getting rid of it and trashing it. Thank you, Amanda. Jeffrey Jones, 1069 Arbor Creek Court. Um, I know since Brian left, we're using other staff for city administrator roles. One of the things that I really enjoyed was looking at the minutes, and at the last of the minutes, we had Brian's report. Everything that's going on with the city. From Starbond report to community reports to anything and everything. That has been absent since January and has been kind of derelict even before then. Would it be possible that those people who are filling in, I know they're burdened already, but maybe on a monthly basis, be able to add something to the minutes so that when we go back and we, we read those, we have something to to look at as to what's going on. There's a lot that goes on to, behind the scenes for you guys that we don't know about, but it would be nice to know. Uh, number two, 
Can I yes. interject in? I believe that we do. We don't call it the city administrator report, but we call it the planning development. We had an economic development report for a while. We did it after Brian was terminated. We did it in February a couple times, and then we dropped it. I, okay. If that's something you guys wanted to keep. But yes, yeah, we can. We can provide something. We can just provide something. Okay. Yeah. We have lots of data. <laughs> we have lots of data. You know, sometimes something is better than nothing. Sure. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate that. Um, I read, and I don't know if it was on the agenda for tonight or something that happened last week about the sidewalk on Maple. Uh, going from was it 183rd to 167th? I think that's great. Have we done any more discussion about sidewalks with within the city, Old Town area? So that discussion was three weeks ago, and that is a city county or which county. county funded thing. County. They just okay. basically said, "Do you guys agree?" Yeah, that was the Wampo yeah. or whatever. Did I get it right? Yeah, well, I, I don't know if you want me to go into the details. But basically, that. he said know. it doesn't cost us anything. Going True. No, no, no. Uh, and, and that's great. I just yeah. didn't know. Your question has the city discussed and put in, putting in any sidewalks? In, yes. You know, like along 199, like you mentioned once before. Just somehow to get those kids to school. Yeah, so we have had those discussions. Okay. We've talked with our city engineers, and to do that would be very expensive. We would have to purchase properties all along 199 South okay. Catello to put in a sidewalk. So they're not feasible, to be honest with you, without purchasing a lot. But of I cars. thought that that was part of the Wampo discussion was also making sidewalks within Goddard City limits, not just county land. No, that Wampo project is from 183rd to that pretty much the Talia. Okay. Right. You know where Tally is at? Yeah, but I remember in our discussions, we were looking at even having a, a walkway over Kellogg. But that was part of the Wampo thing, and we are trying to figure out how to get it's north people to south. Because those, that's projects, those projects have to be approved by Wampo. Okay. And Well, I don't think that, that was a Wampo project. I mean, that, if it was not Wampo, it was through KDOT. And those projects when when was that, Mike? <laughs> Those We're all in the weeds. There's a lot yeah, of details those, here. It's very unlikely for those projects it's, to be uh, okay. Okay. So, so cost prohibitive. There's a lot of information being shot around right now. We okay. I don't know how much you guys want me to talk about this right well, now. Is it the original connectivity study that we did like five, six years ago? We had three yeah. projects on. Okay. okay, so in 2019 we had three <coughs> projects that we presented to WAMP. <coughs> One of them was a 183rd modification to introduce three lanes. One of them was the interjurisdictional sidewalk from 183rd to 167 and all the way down to 135. That was an interjurisdictional, meaning Goddard, Cedric County, and Wichita. That's the Wampo sidewalk. That's what okay. we're talking about. That's completely funded, <laughs> we hope, obviously, by Wichita and Cedric County. You know, um, and then we also introduced the pedestrian bridge across 54 as a Wampo project in 2019 for funding, and they cited that we had insufficient infrastructure to accommodate a pedestrian bridge across 54. Okay. And so long term, obviously, we are introducing a sidewalk on the North Frontage Road um, during the R-Cut project, which is the restricted crossing U-turn, which we're talking about today. Um, but we have no South uh, Frontage Road sidewalk yet. I mean, the ideas and thoughts behind it, we're trying to look at that right now as it's being developed. Um, but that, that about sums it up for now. Yeah. yeah. Well, then, is that something that we need to get with 259? and find out if the kids don't have mm -hmm. safe access to schools, why are we making them walk? I would say, can I give you a recommendation mm -hmm. to spend your efforts on? There will be two projects that I would recommend working with 2591, making 183rd and Tawny a four-way stop. One day, one of those kids oh, yeah, in the high I, school I live and get hit right by there. trucks. I've been advocating for years to make that four-way stop. It will happen, and once a kid gets hit, then that's when they put the stop. Mm -hmm. And the other is to condense the trucks driving around Goddard. I would say most of the trucks are coming from the Dillon Distribution Center. We all know they're parking everywhere, and I've offered to work with the school district and finding some type of location to just travel a lot where these trucks can park, to where they're not driving around everywhere mm -hmm. and parked everywhere. I would say if we're concerned about the kids, that would be the main issue. I don't see where either one of those are getting my kids from 
Old Town Goddard to Goddard Middle School and around that area. Neither one of these has anything to do with that, sir. We're not going to be able. I, the that's what I'm saying. You would need to talk to 259 and say, you've got kids who are walking unsafely. Can you put them on a bus? Yes. That's, that's what I'm asking. We have no control over mm -hmm. Okay. I mean, since, yeah. since, since, the, since the city can't do sidewalks. Well, we have. Yeah. Which I understand. I mean, that is cost prohibitive to, right. to buy right. easements yeah. and all that. I understand that. So now we need to move the discussion over to 259. Right. And there are sidewalks. They just have to walk extra around the way. Well, yeah, I mean, it's like, a, it's like a zigzag. Right. It is very inconvenient. Yeah. But and we're honestly, not in charge of the school's busing. There's and honestly, having a kid walk from 2nd Street and Walnut to GMS is a bit much, if you ask me. But that's not the all's issue. That's 259. Uh, and finally, number three, I'd like to publicly announce, I am running for city council. Can't do that here? I, I, I don't know that we want to open that, Ryan. Okay. That well, then scratch so that. I, I didn't don't say know that. that. We want <laughs> to have this be the political okay. format. I would, I would say, Jeffrey, yeah, come, come back. Oh, sure. to, to help facilitate those types of convers conversations mm -hmm. between school district, county and city mm -hmm. we have to know each municipality's role and what they play okay. I, the city of goddard doesn't manage the busing no. we we can help facilitate trying to bring in walkways and things like that but one of the concerns is that with 183rd and pawnee i we don't have the power to make that a four way stop that is a county issue so Knowing each government municipality's role, mm -hmm. and which role they play, how it gets done is the best way you'll be effective. Oh, yeah. So that's just a little piece of advice. I appreciate that. Yeah. Eric, somebody made a comment about emails. This is three minute conversations. Yeah, I'm sorry. So just people that come up to the board Travis, up here to the podium would you like to talk. come up and speak. Thank you, Jeffrey. Yes, uh, thanks. Just a comment, Travis Bryant, 19 Canada. Um, so we made a comment about purchasing easements. Those easements, you don't have to purchase the easement, right? There's a, there are certain distance back. No, you don't have to purchase easements. You just can't take private property and snag easement. You have to go in and make an agreement with the owner. And and Micah may be able to get more technical. Well, I think I think we're getting way off. The we really there. are, but it is it's well, not well, as simple as like an idea. Type thing. Yeah, yeah, okay, well, I don't I don't think we should discuss this right Hold now. Hold on, one second, everybody. Those types of easements that you're talking about, utility easements, those are protected by the state, if I'm correct. But um, sidewalks count as a, as a safety thing for a utility have, to do for You would have to purchase that that easement right away, and which you can, but you have to get two appraisals, and you would have to pay the fair market value for that. So that's that. And okay. Yeah. I mean, I just, yeah. I know we talked about 100. So my comment I was on the sidewalk, I would just would love to have more information about the north front road, because I know we've talked about we would love to see it on the south front road. So just love to know the decision between north and south, knowing that our development is all south. So curious. Thank you. Thank you, Travis. Anybody else? Going once. Going twice. So okay. <laughs> Moving on to item E1. <coughs> so, as I discussed last time, I've been wanting to recognize special people in our community that have went over and beyond what most community members do and uh, tonight I wanted to recognize a special person. Um, tonight, on behalf of the City of Goddard, I want to thank Shelby Lowen for all of your hard work and dedication to this city. Shelby, for your help and kindness to the community, it is an honor to present the Mayor's Award for the month of June. Shelby has donated her time and energy to the construction of new planters in Linear Park and was instrumental in choosing the right flowers in placement of the planter. In, early, in the early hours of 6 a.m. in the morning, on the morning of Neighbors United, Shelby was hard at work assisting Sean Engel, one of the City of Goddard's 
park attendants, preparing planters and distributing flowers for neighbors united. Shelby went above and beyond to assist the city and help the community with the amazing event to give back. The city council and myself are deeply grateful for the contribution and making our community a great place to live. Thank you, Shelby, for all your hard work. Mayor, can I ask Sean Engel to go up to? They worked in. Yeah. Memorial. He, this is Sean Engel. He's a public works employee. He's a park attendant. And if you've noticed, he's been doing that the last couple of years. Those parks have looked excellent. They're clean. The flowers are, are alive. And, <laughs> and the flowers are weeded and all that fun stuff. So Sean's done an outstanding job. And I'd like him to recognize what this is. Whatever you want to do. Right. I think we did. 
have you know different thoughts and, and I think that's good I mean there's nothing wrong with that so I kind of want to see if we can kind of hone in on that um, as far as uh, you know requiring a, a bachelor's as a minimum or uh, where you're all at there so that would be a question I put back to you I, okay I mean yeah. Yeah. I mean what would make a good candidate since you work in the field I mean Typically, I, I like to see a, ba a, a minimum of a bachelor's and then maybe a, a MPA preferred. And, and, and I think there's going to be, and I didn't say this earlier, but this job should be very attractive because of the metro area. Um, it just will be. Um, so I would, I would say minimum bachelor's interrelated, which could be business, could be political science, uh, with a, a preferred uh, master's degree if you want to go that far. You want to just take the master's out and just say, uh, you know, bachelor's in a related uh, field, that's fine too. Well, you're more than likely going to run across those candidates anyway. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, more so I, than. I think more so the MPA will be there more so than not. Yeah. I don't know. To me, more education, academia kind of rocks the brain after all, I think. So, <laughs> whatever. Uh, yeah. I guess I. To me, I'm not stuck on that. The more, you know, that's fine. Okay. But, uh, yeah. Well, I'll plug it in as that, and then if we have a second, because a lot of times, sometimes you'll we'll get people apply for jobs that it says, you know, required minimum bachelor's, and they don't have a degree, but they've got, you know, 10 years of, as a department head in some, some right. city or whatever. So you may see some of that as well. So, okay. Um, and then this one, I guess, kind of ties into that. Can experience be substituted for education? That's really kind of what I'm saying is that you know, there could be some people that have good backgrounds that uh, have worked and have been successful, and so we don't want to close the door on that as well. So, um, so when we get to number four there, the character characteristics profile, um, the top characteristics, and I tried to highlight the yellow ones where there were at least three of you that uh, selected those areas. And I'll just kind of run through those real quick. Uh, first one, and, th and these are what you're looking for, you know, somebody that uh, can serve your community um, with these skills and abilities. And one of them, the first one is public relations, um, community <coughs> knowledge, and work organization planning, project management. Um, and you were pretty well grouped in a lot of those areas. Uh, governing body relationship management, public relationship management, uh, interpersonal communication skills, and then down to loyalty to public values, community commitment. And then the last section there, reliable work ethic, ethical and professional. And so, like I said, you guys were pretty on board with a lot of those. And, you know, there's some other ones in there of twos. If people want to comment on those, we can certainly add that. I think one of the biggest things in that group that we talked about um, previously is community involvement. We want an administrator that is there that can work with some of the interest groups here in town, some of, get to know all of the faces and understand where they're coming from and know how to, not everybody gets along and is on the same page, but how they can negotiate and navigate through that. Yeah. Great. Yes, some of these other um, the criteria is going to fall in line with the experience and the degree. So it's yeah. a giving. Yeah. So that's the way I voted on it was um, being able to deal with the human aspect is very important. You know, when it comes to businesses and citizens, I mean, that's, that's what tops on the list, right? Very good. This next section, um, and it, it, as I said earlier, this is the first time I've co opted with the league on these searches, and so I'm using some of their survey information. Uh, this next section, um, I don't know that it really is that important to the search, but it, it's kind of interesting because what it did tell me is that as a council, you guys understand your role, you understand the role of the administrator, and that's really what that's all about. I don't know that is probably that critical to the profile that we're developing, so we'll just kind of skip over that. 
And then uh, the, the number six area was what are specific local and regional issues that in your opinion are the highest priority for the new administrator and uh, roads, roads and congestion apparently is a, a topic of interest for all of you. There was five of you that had that, affordable housing um, and uh, basically I think uh, city utility experience. So uh, you all bunched up really good in that area. I don't know if you got together and did the survey, I doubt it, but uh, it, 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 it bunched out. Uh, but that, that tells me something, and that's good uh, good information, though, to have. Um, that, so you're all kind of on the same board there. I don't know if you want to add anything to that, um, but those are pretty specific areas. And I get the housing, I don't know if there's a community in Kansas that's smaller community that's not dealing with housing issues right now. So I would say, and this is just a public note for you, is our current census says that we're at 5,056 in population. And with all of the developments that we have online that has been voted and approved, we're going to be somewhere around 11, you think, Micah? The past 11,000. So you know, double the size of our city. And so how do we continue to grow, manage that? Goddard's flat. We, in order to get any residential developments, we have to oversize sewer mains, bus stations, things like that. And being able to manage through that's somewhat difficult. And most of your housing is, is the challenge is new housing, not necessarily existing housing that needs to be fixed, but new housing. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. And then, you know, the last section, the last couple there just kind of talked about, uh, you know, what, what do you see, what do you, you as individuals see as the biggest challenges facing your community? And there's a lot of similarities. I came up with some common themes of, you know, citizens who want to grow and, uh, and there's apparently some that don't want to grow. And I, I think that's fairly common in, you know, some, some of the smaller cities. Uh, communication with the public, I think, is something that you all talked about. Uh, controlled growth, and there is a difference between growth and controlled growth. And then in infrastructure investment, which typically goes along with, with growth. So um, does that kind of sum up where, where we're at? You think? And you guys did a really good job of putting this down. I appreciate the concise the, the, the comments that you made, too. So well, this is something we're desperately ready to, ready to do. Yeah. yeah. This is the thing we need to get done. Well, why, why don't I, um, and, and there's some of these other comments, again, I'll work those, some of those in into the profile, but, uh, but I did want to kind of, I know you guys got a long night, but I want to go over a couple other quick things with you. Uh, timeline, and I think maybe this is when, So we'll just talk about that real quick, and that gives you an idea of kind of what we're looking at in terms of time. So we're here tonight, uh, June 5th, uh, basically the contract was executed. Uh, we discussed the profile to some degree, and there'll be more opportunities for that. Uh, so the next thing I'll do here is I believe we'll draft a position posting, and I'll get that back to the mayor, um, get that however we want to disseminate that for comments. You know, we can kind of go back and forth on that. Uh, and once that happens, once that's approved, I think your next meeting is June 19th, would that be? Yep. Um, and maybe that could be the night that, that you approve that, just so everybody's on the same page there. I'll work on that. Um, so then after that, then there's a little bit of a law for you, uh, not for me though. Um, we'll post it and we'll have it out there four to five weeks. Um, I, I think, and I'm gonna ask you that. Sometimes four seems like a good thing for me. Sometimes five, it depends on how quickly you want to get this process process going. So we can cut off a week there and we just post it out for, for four weeks. And in all, in all honesty, that's probably plenty um, uh, based on where we're going to post this. So, um, so once we do that, then the resumes will come in and I'll review them um, and put and make a creative summary of all the candidates. Uh, uh, we'll have a meeting with all of you, and that would be an executive session meeting. I hope I'll talk to the city attorney about that um, to just kind of review the candidates. Um, and, and normally, what I like to do, I'll I'll give you my opinion on kind of the top 
10 or whatever it might be and then you know kind of help you through a conversation as you narrow that down um, and maybe we get to a point where there's 10 and that's too many to interview um, but maybe we do semi-finalists and we could do maybe a video interview or a questionnaire um, typically my experience is we get down to four or five um, and we don't really need that step four or five that we bring in for a formal interview um, and I would be a part of that with you as well. Um, and so, you know, that takes us into the uh, August timeframe uh, and basically with a start date potentially of October the 1st. So, and a lot of that just depends on how quickly, you know, the, the, you, if you, you hone in on a candidate, depending upon where they're at, they may have a contract that says they've got to give 60 days notice or maybe it's just 30, um, so that's not uncommon. So. Um, but um, I can probably, we can probably speed that up a little if that day concerns you all, uh, because really what you're doing is you're gonna make a hiring decision in the early part of September, so that's really three months away. Um, and then just the October would be just when they would likely be able to, to start here, so. One thing that I kind of made a promise to our department is um, before we, before we make any commitment is if once we get down to the last three people, would it be difficult to add those last three candidates up to the department heads and, and we are able to get feedback from them? I mean, they're the ones who are gonna be here every day. Yeah. And I'd like to get their feedback. Yeah, I, and that, you know, that just depends on council. Sometimes they wanna do that, sometimes they don't. But typically what I would suggest there is on whatever day we bring a candidate in for an interview, you know, over two days or whatever, um, that, you know, there's a formal interview with the council and then the next interview. And I don't want to say it's an interview, but it's a conversation maybe with the department heads. Um, and then however you get feedback from them, that, that's up to you. But uh, that's not uncommon. Um, but, you know, I always like to emphasize that, it, you know, the council, you know, you're the one making the decision, but obviously, it's important that you know the department heads you know have some a little bit of input in the process but it's still your it's still your hire so but we, we can make that happen without a problem so on, but on average how many people historically do you have that you know that's a good question and i i tell you it's been i did the emporia search and we and emporia is a pretty good size <coughs> college community on the interstate and I think we just have a little over 30. Back in the day when I was a younger guy, there were probably been 70 or 80. So it's just a profession that, that you know, there's not as many young people going into the profession. So, but, but here, um, you know, the location, the metro area, I, I would say 30. And how many of those are good, I can't say, but, <laughs> but you know, you're gonna have some applicants that probably don't meet your criteria. But, uh, that would be a pretty good pool. Uh, and, uh, and part of that's based on the posting, and part of that is based on me, you know, calling some people that I know, um, that I think are ready for this job. I've already had, to be honest with you, a couple calls from individuals who heard that I was maybe involved in this search. Um, so, good. Yeah. Is there any way you can track, like you, you have the metrics here for what we decided we like, right? So, is there any way you track individually? So if you come down to a final three, five candidates, to correlate some sort of metrics to their core values and experience in correlation with what the city's doing. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a matter of, uh, you know, because we're going to have a lot of things that you want um, in that profile or that job posting. You're probably not going to get all of them because there's nobody out there that's probably going to have every one of those. But right, some right. might be really good here. I can give up here because I think we can, we can work through that. Um, but a lot of times it's just, I mean, I don't have a matrix. I, it's just that gut feel, you know, as you go through that inter interview process. And I will tell you, as you do that, um, you know, this day and age, it's easy to find out uh, what people have done in their previous communities. Um, there's no hiding any of that, um, and you'll get a feel as to how you how you relate to them. Can you can you work with this individual? So I think it's just going to be a lot of gut feeling that each of you are going to have, um, and hopefully. Um, at the end of the day, we all come to a consensus, and I always encourage that uh, even if there's one person that might think candidate B would be better, 
for the team, it's a consensus we're hiring individual, I mean, unanimous, unanimous vote. So that's, and that's really important. So um, I, I tried to answer your question very good. But no, I get it. I know there was some. Yeah. And the last thing I want to hand you out is kind of the, the, we're, we're looking to uh, post these jobs, and I want to make sure you're aware of kind of what we're talking about. And you can yay or nay. Um, roughly, we're looking at a thousand, a little over a thousand dollars for postings. And um, so, as we go through this, the ICMA, which is the International City Manager Association, that's that's a that's a big one. That's an important one, I think. It's the most expensive, six hundred bucks. Um, then city code. Um, Iowa League of Cities, and I've got some surrounding states in here, and I don't know how important that is, and it's one thing I might suggest that, you know, if we're doing, some of the cities I've done, they don't want to pay ICMA price, and so we don't, and then we do the smaller, the, the League of Cities, but um, those are some we could omit. Uh, Kansas Municipal Utilities is a good one. Um, Kansas University, uh, Greener Assets, the KU MPA program, that's a good job board there. Of course, the League of Municipalities. Um, and then again, as I said, I've got some other associations in there. And then the Kansas Association of City Managers. Um, so I don't know what, what you're all's thought or do you, is that anything you really want to worry about? Well, I would, I would say that we, we want to get as many candidates yeah. for us to go through as possible. And so, that's the total thousand thirty dollars. Yeah, I would say that it would be wise for us to do that. Okay. Do you guys have any yeah. problem with that? I would agree. I agree. Yeah. This is why you're here. Well, I, I, and I think I think you're wise because you throw that net out there and you never know out of Iowa or whatever, and you know it's a region, and I suspect most of our candidates would be, you know. I think a lot of them will be from Kansas, but there'll be some that work within the regions, but we'll have some uh, pop up from New York, California, they, they find, you know, they find these, these job ads, so, uh, okay. but, uh, you guys have any questions? That is all I have for tonight, and I really do look forward to working with you, and it's going to be a fun process, and, uh, I'll uh, keep communication with the mayor, I think, as we go forward. Um, I'll get the draft job profile to you. And then once applications start coming in, I always like to update the mayor. You can update the council on, okay, this week we've got four in, or we're up to 12, and so it's not a big shock when, when you see it at the end. But, uh, but I'll make sure we, and it, it, you'd be the best one for me to communicate. Yeah, you send it to me, and send it to uh, uh, Ryan Peck. I'll, I'll um, copy Ryan to you. Yeah. I'll put, because he'll, he'll disseminate it to the rest okay. of the council. Yeah. Um, uh, but I'll see him as they come in as well. Well, thanks, John. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, oh, and I do have to tell you, full disclosure, and I hope it's not too late, but I am helping, I am doing a search for, the, for one of your neighboring cities, too. Oh, the city of Mays. So, oh, okay. yeah. oh yeah. just make sure to give us the better guy. Well, <laughs> they kind of said the same thing. But what, what's really interesting about it is, I mean, they're unique cities. I mean, metro areas, and so I think that's why I'm excited. It's going to be some good, good candidates. So, uh, so you know, we'll we'll see who gets to the finish line first. But um, the problem is, there, one candidate's going to fit them right, and one's going to fit you right. So I think that's going to be a good. Pool. We can always steal theirs too. Yeah. Yeah, 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 there you go. You guys have big shoes to fill out in May. Yeah. He was a good guy. Yeah, he's, he's going to be there until, well, early next year, but if they get somebody hired, he'll probably take it. He'll leave a little earlier than that. So, yeah. It's, uh, Very good. Okay. Well, good. Thank, Thank you, John. Uh, Council, I appreciate the opportunity. I look forward to working with you, and we'll be in touch. All right. Thanks, Thank you. Okay. Item 8 1.
remind you uh, the improvements that we're discussing tonight are uh, North District of Front Road, um, Second Street from Main to 199th Street, and uh, mm -hmm. Central Dawkins Lane. Uh, total cost of putting it just be 1.7 million, 1.7 million, 20,000. Um, and, and the reason we're I'm going to turn it over to let Brett, our financial uh, advisor, explain why we're why it's being uh, structured this way. We have some scheduling conflicts coming up in the next uh, two months, so we'll let him take over. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Council, Brett Sherwood, Steve Nicholas and Company, City's financial advisor. Um, this is pretty much the same process you're used to. We're going to uh, take bids for uh, general obligation bonds award the bid to the uh, lowest true interest cost underwriter. Um, your next two scheduled, regularly scheduled council meetings are a little difficult for our market. Uh, the next one is June 19th, which is Juneteenth. It's a federal holiday and the bond market's closed. And then the one right after that is currently scheduled for July 3rd, right before July 4th, we won't sell bonds on that day either. So this is a little bit different than you were used to uh, tonight, you, we're asking you to adopt the sale resolution authorizing us to go forward, uh, put together the preliminary official statement, obtain the rating, um, solicit the bids on the bonds, and actually uh, sell the bonds on June 28th. Uh, on June 19th, which you'll still meet 19th, um, but it's before the sale date, we'll ask you to actually adopt the bond issuance resolution which would normally happen on the sale date. I'd usually come after the morning of the sale, explain the results of the sale, and have you adopt that resolution. We're asking you to adopt that in, in advance. Basically, the resolution for consideration next week, or next council meeting, um, will have parameters in it. It basically states that as long as we can hit a true interest cost target, uh, and that the sale of the bonds does not exceed $1,720,000. Mm -hmm. And the interest target, this says 6%, that's actually uh, supposed to be four and a quarter percent. Uh, that's related to the taxable temporary notes that is uh, two items down the line. But one, if we can hit that um, t true interest cost target, um, it authorizes the mayor to sign the bid form and tentatively award the bonds to the winning underwriter. And if that happens, that'll schedule everything to go to move forward and schedule the closing. Um, I can come back I can come back at your meeting on I believe it's July 17th, which would be two days before our closing, but I can come back and explain the uh, results of the sale at that time. Uh, by that time you'll be locked in. Um, and the interest rates will be locked in. But the, the reason for expediting the process is to lock in the interest rates as expeditiously as possible. Hopefully get you the lowest interest rate we can uh, by doing that. But I uh, just wanted to kind of walk you through that and explain why this process is a little bit different. Well, it's actually a lot different than you're used to, uh, but there's a good reason for it. Uh, as I said, June 28th, uh, we'll open the bids, check for accuracy, and uh, if everything checks out, we'll ask the mayor to sign the official bid form that locks in the rates. And uh, city council meeting following the sale, I'll come back and explain the results. Uh, resolution authorizes the mayor, city staff, financial advisor, and bond council to proceed with the offering of the sale. Uh, bond issue amount not to exceed one million seven hundred twenty thousand. That's for project costs, cost of issuance, and capitalized interest, if needed. Issuance complies with the adopted resolution 23-30, as detailed previously. Uh, cost of the improvements will be financed through KSA 14570 at SEC uh, and under Charter Ordinance Number 12 uh, of the City of Concord. Proposed documents have been reviewed by Bond Council Kevin Count, Gilmore and Bell, myself, and City Attorney Ryan Peck, and it's been approved for. Uh, recommended that the City Council adopt. Those resolution authorizing the offering for sale of general obligation bonds 
Series 2023-A for street and road improvements. You have to any questions? Okay, we have these great questions. Thank you. Thank you. Um, what about the Hawker Lane? I think yeah, we should do this as a committee. Well, it's not committed to it. We have our list of things we'd like to do, but Hawkins Lane is contingent upon hearing back from the residents if they want to be annexed. But it doesn't have to be. If they don't want to be annexed, then the road won't be paved, then it doesn't change anything. We have plenty of streets that we can pave and will fix. If that ends up going through, you can spend these bond proceeds on that project. Uh, this is just long term. Okay. So. <coughs> and that's accounted for four other projects. Okay. If that doesn't go through. And I think, Brent, if Hawkins Lane doesn't have to look as projects that we yeah. spend that time. Two streets. Or, yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. uh, motion? So motion. Motion by Sarah. Second. Second by Keaton. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. <coughs> 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 Hi, Representative City Council. This is item H.2, the IRB request for rest of bean and tap fee re refund. <clears throat> so, Shane Reader of the Rest of the Bean has asked the City Council to consider a partnership for the request of industrial revenue bonds for the abatement of ad valorem taxes. Uh, Shane Reader wanted to also know the City Council will consider waiving the requirements of taxes for water and sewer for the Rest of the Bean as the contractor for the Rest of the Bean has already paid for the water and sewer. The owner is requesting a refund of those particular fees. <clears throat> the City currently does not have an IRB policy, so City staff are using the same policy as Bel Air to outline an agenda item and give parameters to request. It's very similar to what we saw in Camp Bow Wow. City Council wants to formally consider the request for an IRB. City staff will publish all necessary documents and have a developer file an application with the city paying a non refundable fee of 2800 to cover the cost of the city professional staff time. Publication costs, as well as required cost benefit analysis that we usually generate with WSU. Uh, governing bodies determining if they want to consider an IRB either in part or full for the rest of the bean. City Council is also deciding if they want to refund the rest of the bean in part or full for the water and sewer tax fee. The fees collected for water and sewer tax are 2500 for water, 2500 for the sewer. City Council wants to have a formal consideration of the rest of the bean IRB request. The following would have to happen. Application submitted to the, by the applicant and fee day for costs incurred for preparation of documents as well as an understanding that the application does not guarantee an incentive. Publication costs would be 300 times seven, which is our city newspaper. Uh, publication application fee of 1500 for professional services and staff time. Cost benefit analysis, which we just refer to as a CBA for 1000 Total cost up front would be 2800 Property tax abatement is to be considered a public notice published in the city newspaper allowing seven days last prior to council consideration of application letter of intent sent out to taxing jurisdictions. This is, this is all stuff you can't bow wow. Uh, the property tax abatement is to be considered cost benefit CBA by the city, typically the city recruits at Wichita State University. Center for Economic Development and Business Research at CEDBR to generate a CBA at around 800 to 1,000. It can take about two weeks. So we actually, so I spoke with WSU actually on Monday. It's, they're, they're saying about two weeks, maybe longer, so we actually won't be considering Camp Bow Wow's probably until July just because of their turnaround time. Once a public hearing date has been established, the City Council will deliberate during a public hearing on what type of incentive to grant if they want to grant any incentive at all. The options would be as follows sales tax exemption incentive only, property tax exemption in whole or in part, incentive only, both sales tax and property tax exemption in whole or in part incentive. Since the city does not have a formal policy, like I said, it is emulating the policy of Bel Air, are certain questions for the council to consider. Is the business unique, or is there other businesses that provide some of the services? You want to try to avoid unfair advantage. What kind of jobs are being created? High end jobs, medium or lower end jobs. Uh, typically, the CBA would have a but for understanding. If not, but for the incentive, would this project be able to move forward on its own? Does state law prohibit the business from receiving tax abatements? Uh, incentives based on North American Industry Classification, which is called the NAIC. Rest of the NAIC is listed as 722505, which is not a list of prohibited use. And then you, of course, have any questions about counsel or the financial advisor. And I know Kevin Counsel's not here, so I'm not sure who it is. I wish I could read. I'm just assuming you guys read the agenda. <laughs> I'm actually sleeping up here. Um, uh, the little valuation was around one, 198 thousand. This is for the building permit. So this, um, the building permit valuation is 198. Total potential appraised value would be 245, 400. That's based on the land and the building valuation. Of course, it could be appraised higher depending on 
non uh, financial documents that we have not seen. City tax would be around 1920 per year. Total taxes per year would be around 8285 which includes the state, 1.5 mil, the county, Goddard, USD 265, county fire district bonds. A 10 year 100% abatement of city property tax would be approximately 19200 A 10 year 100% abatement of all taxing jurisdictions would be approximately 82846 Exception, we always have to throw that exception in there. State law requires that there's a protected eight mills at the school district. So total potential abatement would be the 82846 minus the eight mills, which would be 77938. City sales taxes for 198,000, which would be the estimated construction cost based on the valuation of the building, would be around 1,980. Total sales tax exemption would be 16,830, which includes the city, county, and state sales tax. And Kevin Cowan, our abate, right, and Kevin mentioned this last time from Camp Bow Wow, but typically when you do a sales tax abatement, the largest person that's impacting obviously is going to be the state because we have a 1% sales tax and then the county's got a 1% and then the state's got 6.5%. So when you waive sales taxes, generally you're affecting the state when you're affecting the city. Uh, building construction has already commenced, so just a note. I don't know how much is actually left on construction in terms of how much would be abated. Uh, maybe the roof? I don't know. But <clears throat> that's something to be considered. Financials, cost incurred by the city for legal expenses, publication cost by the townhouse, and the city staff time will be charged with the applicant. Legally, it's approved as a form. There's two different motions here. One is recommended to the city council either one, reject consideration of formal application by the rest of the this is for the IRB, or accept consideration of formal application by the rest of the dean. And then number two would be either approve the TAP fee refund for water and sewer or deny any TAP fee refund for most. So at that point, questions, comments, thoughts? And we do have a change of reader behind us at the rest of the dean. Sherman, financial advisor. I guess I'll start off this is no different than really what we did for Camp Bow Wow. I, uh, I gave the spiel for Camp Bow Wow. We're always concerned about setting precedents. Um, I know there's other coffee shops, but the rest of being has its own brand, it's its own thing. These are uh, good people that are investing a lot of money here, and um, I think it would be wise to set the precedents that we're going to help businesses. Um, do we want to start with that first and then move on? What I got your leisure. So questions, comments, or thoughts, as mentioned, the values of the Do I have a motion to Oh hold on. I just wanted to throw out that it, it would be we would kind of tie the two together if it would be an option. Rather than approving to refund that entire tap fee, would it be considerable to then to just waive the non refundable fee if we were going to approve the IRB application because it's 2800 so it's just a little over half of what they have to pay us. Well, there's the funds, that the funds that the money goes into. It would be cleaner to do it separate. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted because to Because those tax fees are used here. to pay for all of the, yeah, <laughs> a lot of things. Because, yeah. I mean, for sure. what, are the, what are the tax fees used for, guys? So, so tap fees, basically a tap fee is permission to access city infrastructure. That's all generally okay. it's That's sure. all it is. It's permission to say we're connecting to city infrastructure. Um, <coughs> waiving, waiving tap fees is not unusual. We've done it for other sure. businesses in the past. We, we did it for uh, Tanganyika. Yes. And so we've already collected these tap fees too. Right. They, they've already paid for them. So at this point it'd be simply a refund of the tap fees. No. Sure. What do we do for uh, Scooters? Yeah. What do we do for scooters? They never ask. Neither does Starbucks. They should ask. Yeah, but, yeah. but that's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Can't get nothing if you don't ask for it. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I like it. Kind of like what uh, Mayor Larkin was saying. We want to encourage local businesses. We want to encourage our people to want to open up businesses here. So I'm all for it. Any more Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve the consideration of a formal application by Mr. B. Motion by Keaton, second by Aubrey. All in favor say aye. 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 Abstain. Aye. Okay. And then do I have a motion to approve the refund of the water and sewer? I'll make a motion. Motion by Aubrey. Second, I I second it, but it dies. 
is there, do we want to do a water? Yes. Can I make a comment? Yes. Shane Reader, uh, a couple things I want everybody to be aware of. Number one, the lab Christie worked very hard to open this coffee shop. Um, and it works for three years. And Mike has been aware of it for close to two, I believe. Uh, with all that being said, as far as the tap fees are concerned, um, just to give a little knowledge, um, in Wichita, they run the water from the main to the meter. Uh, and that's what your tap fee is used for. Hence the reason it's called a tap fee. Here, um, Rook's been very helpful. There's no problem with that in this water department. But I'm having to pay for the boring to go underneath the front drain. And to let you know, beyond the 2500 I'm going to have $10,000 real close to, to get water and sewer, all that come up. Okay. okay. So when you look at the big cost of it, I'm adhering most of it, plus my tax fee. So it's going to, I mean, if, if if, this, if the council doesn't consider this, it's costing me $20,000 to even get water and sewer right. to the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So my point is, I'm asking for some concessions. We're trying to make this work. Um, understand we're using our own money. Uh, well, I don't want to say that the bank's money, but um, we want to be in Goddard for a reason. We're not here because we could be anywhere, but we chose God. Uh, so that's basically my spiel uh, at the end of the day. Uh, Do you guys have any more questions about that? What's your projection uh, ultimately? We're waiting on the contractor to get back with us because of the rain that slowed a lot of things down. Um, every time they got ready to pull concrete, you know, they're putting insulation, putting the inside in uh, in, uh, today. Um, the actual structure itself has already been through all the inspections. Electrical's been through the rough end inspections. We have all the rough ends done. So now it's to the point of finish work. So it's a matter of getting the rest of the contractors and everything else. Uh, this, is a, this is just I mean, yes. Strictly us. Privately owned, locally owned. She's created her own brand. Um, she's from the Pacific Northwest. Uh, she went up there four or five times. Created her own. Uh, what do you call them? Blends. Roasts. I'm not a coffee guy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just you know, there's black coffee. Um, but she's created her own road. She's done all this on her own. And I told her to begin with, bring me a plan, <coughs> create a business plan, and then I'll approve it if we want to spend our money. And she like shot tank sure <laughs> <that is out. laughs> yeah. Pretty much. Um, and with that being said, I just want to make sure everybody understands how the tap fees actually work in other cities and it could be Kingman, it could be Wichita. Will I have a second? There's a motion. This is this isn't um, it's not like a corporate chain coming here, putting in yeah, something where they sure. got endless pockets. This is entrepreneurship its finest. This is small mom and pop shop trying to get up and running. We owe it to people that want to come in to this community and share that dream with us. That's just my approach. I mean, uh, yeah. Well, that's, I, I love local businesses. I love the idea of supporting our local and making Goddard. You know, it I, I kills me to, to see people leave Goddard to go to Wichita to get these kind of things. Uh, my only issue is kind of like what we've been talking about the last few weeks is setting a precedent for the next one that comes. And 
and are we going to be willing to waive? At, at what point do we say, no, we're done waiving the tap fee? You know what I mean? I a lot of, I get that a lot of businesses, that. a lot of businesses historically, we've waived a lot of tap fees. <coughs> this is an unusual thing. The only unusual part about this one is it's already been paid. Uh, it's already been paid, and now we're reimbursing it. Right? That's the only unusual part. We're not setting a precedence here. This is this is something that um, uh, has happened many times in the past, and so it's it's an incentive that we can do as a city. Um, it's a small cost to us, but it's a big cost to you, for sure. And so, um, one last comment I want to make clear as well within this. Um, I've been shopping local on some construction supplies, and this gentleman back here uh, has seen me several times. You spot a big roast? So, <laughs> I'm trying to support local as well. So, sure. I'll second. Okay, I did. I guess I have a motion by Aubrey, second by Keaton. All in favor say aye. 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 All against? Aye. Okay, motion passed. Thank you very much. This is item H.3. Sure. You got water. down the street. Anyway, this is item H.3. Resolution authorizing sale of GL temporary note series 2023 4 for Bridge of Maple Phase 1. So, you guys have seen these before. So, as developers propose or petition to develop and put in improvements. They submit petitions and then we go through this process for financing and improvements. Those finances obviously convert to um, special assessments later on. Um, so this is Bridger Maple Phase 1 petition for financing improvements. These were considered on May 15, 2023 and after being reviewed as determined to approve petitions for financing improvements for Bridger Maple Phase 1, which is step one of the process. Bond Council drafted the resolution for offering the sale of the notes, which are being presented today, which is step two. Uh, the resolution authorizes the sale tax for general obligation, general temporary notes for improvements approved by the following resolutions. 2326, 2327, 2328, and 329, total estimate of $3.8 million. Uh, New City Council's next meeting, which you guys, I mean, he kind of already went over this, um, item H.1, but basically there's certain dates that would be kind of prohibitive of trying to get true interest costs or selling them during those times, so we're asking for special resolutions. Steve will present the results of the sale of the council. Note amounts 3.8, no maturity date August 1st, 2024, note to call date February 1st. Finance includes project cost, compensations, capitalized interest to make the interest payments during construction. Notes are scheduled to close on July 19th, which is Wednesday, which will must be available for the project. The city's tax is at bank qualifications limit for 2023. This issuance must be issued taxable. So this is something we talked about before. Financing plan is a sale and issue of taxable GO temp notes in 2023 and refinance in early 2024. Longer term tax is GO temp notes. 2026 prior to maturity, the tax exempt notes will be retired by GO bonds and the bond payments will be paid via special assessments by the property owners benefiting from the improvements, which we call them simply specials. Financial considerations, pretty typical. The insurance complies with the resolution 23, 23 through 26 through 23 29 as detailed previously. House improvements will be financed in KSA 12. 6A and YS12 through the special assessment process. <coughs> Legal consideration for proposed documents have been reviewed by Bond Council, Kim Callum, Kim Bell, financial advisor, Brett Schoenberg, Stephen Nichols, and City Attorney Brad Peck, who has been involved. It is recommended City Council adopt the proposed resolution authorizing offer for sale of the tax and general obligation to the City 2023 dashboard improvements in Bridger and Maple Phase 1. As mentioned, we do have a financial advisor if you guys have questions related to that. Any questions? Do I have a motion? A motion. Motion by Sarah. A second. Second by Aubrey. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Very good. Peter Kingdoms is really good now. <laughs> so I'm just keeping it, keep it in line. So this is H.4. This is Sam Application Waiver and Fireworks Display for Lions Club 4th of July. Uh, Goddard Lions Club would like to have a 4th of July fireworks display within the corporate city limits of Goddard. It is every year. Um, all public displays of fireworks must be approved by the City Council in accordance with Chapter 7, Article 3 of the City of Goddard Code. During this event, there may be the use of amplified sound, which requires a sound waiver. If such sound is plenty of audible in excess of 150 feet, this would require a sound waiver ordinance as well as to allow such sound application. 
So that will be on July 1st, Saturday from 9.45 to 10.15 p.m. Or in case of other the event, it will be on July 2nd, which is a Sunday from 9.45 p.m. to 10.50 p.m. Uh, so the council is considering improving the fireworks display and sound away from the Battle Lines Club for the July Fireworks Show. So these are the articles that would be waived. It's the Chapter 11, Article 13, Loud Noises, and the approval <coughs> of Chapter 7, Article 3 for Fireworks, as listed here. Italicized would be the one that is verbatim coming from the code. Uh, this is at a sink, that's not bad for, but this is the general location. We do have management level of the Lions Club, so if there are any questions, if this location is generally where it is or if it's been relocated, something I'll ask. Swap location cost for the ordinance approved as the form. It is recommended to the council to both one way to read the ordinance and two approve the way for the sound ordinance and the issuance of the permit for a fireworks display for the Lions Club fireworks show. Do I have any questions? Thank you very much. This is item H.5. This is about our Lions Club Car Show sound waiver. So the Lions Club Car Show obviously was a big success. They're trying to go ahead and get that uh, for approved for the next year, 2024. So Lions Club would like to host a car show on April 6th or 7th, weather permitting of 2024 on the Main Street, right between the hours of 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. Estimated a road closure permit to host this event along with all necessary documents, including liability insurance. This event will have amplified sound with music and announcements that will be about 150 feet away and will require a sound waiver to be approved by the City Council. So, the current regulation found in the code is the Goddard Chapter 11, Article 13, loud noises. The City Council is considering waiving the sound ordinance as it pertains to the amplified sound and then using the streets on Chapter 13, Article 2. You've seen this image before. So, this is the proposed closure just south of the post office right here and right here um, on the main street just a little bit south of Santa Fe and a little bit north of South Street. Financially small publication costs legal to approve as a form. Once again it's recommended city council waiver reading the ordinance for one and then two approve the waiver for the sound ordinance from the Lions Club car show and road closing request as mentioned Matt Trimble is here representative of Lions Club if you guys have any questions. And the car show was a big success wasn't it? 200 cars. Yeah. I think we would be foolish not to do it again. Mm -hmm. Make a motion to waive the reading of the ordinance. Motion by Sarah. Second. Second by Brent. All in favor say aye. 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 I make a motion to approve the waiver for the sound ordinance for the guided lands for the partial and road closure request. Second. Motion by Sarah. Second by Aubrey. Roll call. Councilmember Fish? Yes. Councilmember Leland? Yes. Mayor Larkin? Yes. Councilmember Trailer? Yes. Councilmember Collins? Yes, be treated. Be ordinance 926. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 Excuse me. This is item H.6. This is the North Park Material Removage and Salvage. So in 2019, the city purchased land from the Jim Fowles administration in the North Park along 183 meter road. This land came with two existing buildings and a length of pipe fencing and wire fencing. This location also has a windmill and old pump located on the land. Preparation for the future development of parklands and staff is put in the possibility of selling and salvage of any material not considered for long term use. This would include any fencing not desired to be kept on the property, the windmill, smaller buildings, pump, and post, etc. So he's hoping to sell some of the salvage and the proceeds would be used to erect a fence around the budding residential property. This fence around the residential property is part of the agreement for the sale of the land. So he's hoping to fill this obligation to prepare the land for future development at the same time. City staff is aware that it is entirely possible that there would be no cost recovery from the salary of the buildings and plants. It's also entirely possible that the removal of the items described would incur cost for the city. City Council is considering if they want to sell the items attached to Exhibit H.6A. If the City Council desires to sell the items included in Exhibit H.6A, City staff will post them for sale and be removed at the expense of the buyer. The buyer does not want to pay for the items, but is willing to remove them for free. This is something the City Council will have to consider. Other options as well as remove our listed on the recommendations. 
So the city council is considering they want to remove certain items from the North Land Park. And these items include are not limited to the following water fencing, water pump posts, pipe fencing, and small utility barn, which should be demolished. <clears throat> this is the property in question. This dash line is the property limit. This is the residential property that was part of the agreement that we would erect a fence around here and then a fence right over here. We have an easement that would cross through the private property so we could maintain riprap or whatever would be necessary to maintain this pond. This would be the property to be demolished. So when you look at this, this is the fence to be erected. This is the fencing that would be removed. This would be demolished. Here's the windmill and the pump. Here's the line of fencing over here and a gate. And that's the additional fencing over here. Here's the windmill and the pump. Here's that black pump. pump. I'm not sure. It looks pretty old. Yeah. I vote 1900. Yeah. The handles on. Um, the handles on. Uh, the handles on. 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 Yeah. I, I think we sell it in an auction, then they'll remove it. 
the work of the contractors. This is a requirement that must be met prior to bidding on projects for construction. The city submitted requests for qualifications on RQ and received two bids. City staff reviewed the two bids and determined that transit system was the most qualified to complete the work. After negotiating the contract agreement, it was determined that transit systems could perform the work. <coughs> Do not exceed amount listed in Exhibit A of attachment H point A <coughs> of 355,093.9. City Council decided if they want to approve the mayor to sign a formal agreement between city and transit system for field services inspection for ARCA transportation to approve my US 54400. This is sort of a review. The only, the only reason we would exceed the 355093.90 would be for liquidated damages or if there was um, any uh, change orders that would be approved by the city engineer. It is anticipated this project take about 180 days until completion. Bidding for construction contractors could be in June and July if KO allows it. Uh, construction bids will need to remain open for 30 days, meaning construction could begin at sometime in August. This is Exhibit A, which is in the contract in that attachment. This is a portion of the ARCA. I, I would consider this the most prominent portion of the ARCA. This is the connection with the Barber and Crown Drive. House for fulfilling the contract shall be expensed to the budget start on time. Robert working on Morris Lang has approved the contract as the form. It is recommended City Council approve the contract with Transit for Engineering Field Services. And I do want to invite uh, Slade of Trans Systems up here. He's one of the engineers who's reviewed this project, if you would. And he's able to answer sort of the engineering of it and some of the, any additional questions. And we do obviously have Tom Foraker of the city engineers. So thank you. <laughs> do you all have any questions? I would say I'm, I'm happy to sign, finally see this project starting. And it's been a long time coming. Seven years, I think. Yeah, it's been a while. Seven years. So after seven years, we're finally going to have some progress. So. I'm looking forward to it. I, I mean, you're, you're a required portion of this project. Um, um, so I don't know if, I, I don't have any questions. I've worked with Harlan and Micah and, and you guys on this. Um, uh, it's very qualified. You did the engineering on the project. So I have no questions. Not at all. Yeah, I also, I did want to point out in that picture that, I guess we have it here, yeah, that this will also give us that crosswalk that, that we've been, I know has caused a lot of discussion and obviously it's not going to be the up and over that, that some people were wanting. There you go, Jeffrey. It's it's something there's, yeah. there's your crosswalk, so it's something. yeah, I'm, uh, I'm excited to see that and, uh, and to continue to grow, so thank you guys. Okay. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Make a motion by... Keaton, second by Aubrey. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, before we start this one, would it um, be better to send uh, with your comments earlier? And I'm aware that a letter was not sent. And if we could resolve this problem um, before. Is that okay? Could we send a letter and you discuss them, discuss with it uh, tomorrow, and then we figure out a time frame on how to get the problem solved? Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah. Is that okay with you? Oh, yeah. Is that okay with the council? Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Thank All right. Oh, well, will you guys be in tomorrow to talk to me? I will come in and we talk to you tomorrow if we're not both there. Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. So H9's got three potential properties. We will just simply exclude the conversation out there. Okay, sounds yep. good. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. There you go. This is item H.9. It's a code violation, violations on Main Street regarding the light. Um, so the city's desire is to continue to improve the image and feel the city's growth, fostering a sense of community as well as growth and progress. However, from time to time, the city has to get involved with code violations that could potentially cause a flooding appearance or impact the health, safety, and welfare of the community. As city grows and certain businesses improve their buildings and or new ones, other businesses have become declining either from lack of capital or general indifference. Under Chapter 8, Health and Welfare, Article 3, Environmental Code, the city has code that prohibit a blighting influence. If the city code enforcement officer deems the building as a dilapidated state to find below, cause of this blighting influence, the officer issues a certified letter outlining the issue and required action that need to be taken. Typically, the exterior conditions allow for 45 days for any conditions listed in the letter. However, anyone receiving the letter can notify the city within 15 days that they would like a hearing before the governing body to contest a violation or act for lenient, ask for leniency on the matter. Three properties on Main Street have been pointed out to the city over time. Each one on its own would fall under a violation of Chapter 8, Article 3. 
Two of them are commercial properties and one of them is a residential property. These properties will have their addresses listed, but images outlined in black have been provided in the agenda packet. So we need to put their addresses or anybody's address on here. We just have <coughs> this discussion. Some of the expenses for remediation of these properties could equal more than several thousand dollars. As such, the staff would like to see council be aware of this prior to issuing the citations. Several properties have been pointed out, as I mentioned. Two commercial, one residential, thousand dollars, possibly scheduling a hearing for the city council. So if we notice something, and there's a, we, if somebody may tell us, for example, earlier during citizens' comments, somebody's like, hey, my neighbor getting a little unruly over there. So we go, sure, we'll take a look at it. So we go take a look at it, and we send them a letter, and we go through the formal process. Sometimes we're informed about properties, and we go over and there's no code violation. It's just simply somebody saying, hey, you know, they don't like their neighbor, or they don't like this, or they don't like that. They're trying to use the city as a cudgel to beat their neighbor over the head, which we try to avoid adamantly. And there's oftentimes we have to refer to things as being civil matters. Um, but obviously, some of these properties have come up before, and it's been noted that they have maybe a blighting influence. And obviously, blight can be a lot of different factors, but we do have an outline for what defines blight under Chapter uh, Chapter 8, Article 3. And so, here's Chapter 8, Article 3. The governing body, this is verbatim, the governing body has found that there exists within the city unsightly hazardous conditions due to dilapidation, deterioration, or disrepair of walls, siding, fences, or structure. Uh, exteriors, accumulation, increasing the hazards of accidents of the climate, structural defects, and cleanliness, unsightly stored or parked material, equipment, supplies, machinery, vehicles, or parts thereof. Such conditions are inimical to the general welfare of the community and that they have a blighting influence on adjoining properties, the neighborhood, and the city, or are injurious to the health and safety of the residents of the city. The governing body desires to promote the public health, safety, and welfare by the repair and removal of abatement regulations of such conditions in the manner here and after provided. So this is city code. We abide by it, we follow it. Obviously, people, if they receive letters, such as you know, have some of this outline in there, like as mentioned, they have 15 days, they can come to city council and be like, hey, can we have more time? Can we have less time? Can I keep it the way it is? Um, I don't think Micah read this right. Maybe blight means something else, you know? So there's lots of, you guys have seen that before. People have contested things before. Um, everyone's got that right. Um, obviously, because we're talking about personal property, so it's a big deal. And so this is just something that has to be considered. The words and phrases listed below when used in the article shall have the following meanings. Once again, this is verbatim. And under 8305D, dilapidation, deterioration, or disrepair shall mean any condition can be characterized by but not limited to holes, breaks, rot, decay, crumbling, cracking, peeling, or flaking, pain, rusting, or other evidence of physical damage, neglect, lack of maintenance, excessive use of weathering. And exterior, those parts of the structure which are exposed to weather are subject to contact with elements, including the element of two, siding, spacings, veneers, masonry, roofing, foundations, porches, screens, shutters, windows, doors, or signs. So this is one of the properties that came up in question. Obviously, we have omitted the um, address. <clears throat> but you can see here there's dilapidation, traditional characterizations of blight, rotting wood, etc. City staff has been informed of this property multiple times through several years. So at this point, we're seriously considering the issuance of a blight certified letter. This is another one. This one has come up several times. It's just a general lack of infrastructure. It's been improved, and then the windows would break, and then there has been no further improvement. And then we'll skip the next slide since we can't do it. So financially, there'd be a small cost for certified letters. The properties in question fall under chapter, chapter 8, Health and Welfare, Article 3, Environmental Code. It is recommended that City Council direct staff accordingly, which just leaves a line open for you guys just to direct us however you see fit from the interpretation and enforcement of Chapter 8, Article 3. Have letters by now? No. I guess start with the letters. Um, start with our nice couple back here tomorrow and talk with them. Don't send them a letter, uh, just talk with them and figure out a timeline on when, when we can uh, get everything resolved. Um, with the other two, I was going to start off with some letters, right? Right. Good? Agree. Send letters. Good to agree. Okay. Do you need a motion or is direction good enough? No, motion and second would be great. Make a motion to direct city staff to send a letter to the two commercial properties and have a discussion with the residential property owners. Yes. Second that. Motion by Sarah, second by Brent. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Second by aye. All right. Governing body comments. Keaton. 
Yeah. All right. Now that we got this mic, it feels weird to stand up, so I'm going to start sitting down. Um, yeah. I, <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to guess everybody knows what I'm going to bring up first. This week is the first Goddard Main Street Market um, of the summer, and we are super excited. We have 34 vendors. Um, I will say we are still looking for some more produce. So if you know anybody, um, even if you have somebody who, who goes on Saturdays and does markets, and maybe we'll have some extra, you know, that they, they need another place, um, let us know. We'd love to hear from them. Um, because I, I think it's going to be an awesome event and we're looking forward to it. So uh, we're going to do a ribbon cutting at 2 o'clock, um, kind of down on the, that south end, uh, close to the park, uh, outside of the, you know, Co-Fellow um, area. So, uh, yeah, hope to see everybody there. Um, as far as tonight goes, I, I like to see where we're moving. Um, I think Goddard's moving forward on a lot of things that a lot of people have wanted for a while. And so, um, you know, the, the crosswalks and sidewalk discussion and, uh, and, and some of that kind of stuff makes me really excited to see the future of what we're going to do in Goddard, Kansas. So that's all I got. Sarah? Um, I'm excited that we're moving forward and with the hiring of a new city administrator manager, whatever term we use. Um, I'm ready to get that done so you guys can have some extra breathing room and you guys are all doing a great job managing your departments and getting things done and moving things forward. Um, I mean, the bonds for the roads, I'm excited for that, that we're going to get the frontage road repaired and work on others in town. I'm ready for the R cut to come to fruition and get that done. Excited about the crosswalk though, can't say. I'll let my kid cross it by herself. That's <laughs> a little much. Um, we'll see when it's all said and done how, what the structure looks like. Um, but yeah, I'm excited that we're getting things done. Cause it's been a productive five months, I think. Aubrey? Yeah. yeah, a couple things are in mind. I mean, I'm excited about that thing we did tonight. Really. Um, main thing that sticks out in my mind is this, is sitting up here and being a part of a group of people that have compassion. You know, we care about small business coming in. I, 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 you know, I totally believe in that. People especially putting their life savings in to, to, to make a dream come true. It means a lot more to me than uh, Starbucks coming in, you know, and asking for money when they got deep pockets. I like to see those dreams come true. So, and then plus, you know, with, with the folks back here, you know, we're going through some struggles, we need to get something done. When you're sitting on a governing body that has compassion for that, it, it means a ton to me. So, thank you guys. Brian? You know what, I, I will do my best to come on Sunday. Yeah, I'll take but it. You know what this weekend is? It's the 51st annual Lake Captain Car Show. And I will definitely be there. Well, when it gets hot, come get a snow car. You come this cold. Mm -hmm. I will be on the top of the Oh, God. Jeffrey's going to be there. Yeah, I was going to say, Jeffrey's going to be there. I'll be at the farmer's market. Oh, okay. come on. I look forward to it. Nope. 10 a.m., I'll be there. One point for the good guys. Um, Let's go. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. The DM Jam uh, Park Show, I'll be at. Yeah, well, I just got some new paint work stuff done on it, so I'm pretty proud of it. I'm picking it up tomorrow night, so. And you want a good windmill? <laughs> no. I mean, we could do we could do like a one car car show if you want to come park in the park. You know, I will come. come, just come I will bring it, bring it, come. Y'all hear that? We got a car show too. So <laughs> it's gonna be awesome. Okay. Um, uh, we've got we've accomplished a lot of things today that have been in the works for a while. Um, we have several other things that we're going to accomplish here in the near future. We've got final bids coming in from the community center. We've got um, bids coming in from, for the community garden. Um, next Monday, we have a joint meeting with the planning commission to discuss the main topic of discussion, which would be multi-family housing 
and the other would be how do we zone um, quote unquote Old Goddard um, because some of these lots and Old Goddard are narrower and it doesn't quite mix with some of the other um, zoning areas in Goddard. So that will be productive. Um, I just want to say one thing politically. I'm happy to see two candidates for the city council here tonight and one candidate for the school board. It, it is very important that you all be here and I'm not trying to talk down on you but educate yourselves in what you're getting ready to get into because if the community gives you the opportunity to be up here hopefully you're not faced with as much criticism as me but you will face criticism and you will have to make tough decisions and to be able to take that on the chin and sleep well at night, sometimes it's tough. And I have a lot of respect for the man in the arena because he deserves a lot of respect, the woman in the arena. Because they do, they're doing something that most people don't want to do. And while we not, might not agree, we don't, as you see tonight, we didn't agree on a few things, and that's okay. But just as long as your heart is in the right place and you educate yourself from A to Z on the topics that you're getting ready to vote on, that's the most important part of sitting here, is knowing what you're voting on and knowing why you voted on it. I believe adamantly in the things that I'm voting for. Not everybody might agree with that, and that's okay. But that's democracy, and that's what makes this country great. So, that being said, I believe that we have two executive sessions. That's going to be combined in one. Okay. And which which is the motion? You might need to alter who goes into this executive session. Ryan, do you want to call? I guess no, we can, we can bring all the same people in. Is everybody that needs to be in there on that list, or do you need anybody else? And is it for personnel matter pursuant to non elected or for both? It's, it's, this motion is correct, I believe. Okay. I make a motion to raise this into executive session under KSA 7543192 for consultation with an attorney on matters that would be privileged in attorney client relationships to include. The city attorney, police chief, and the city clerk. We will reconvene the open meeting in the city council chamber at 9.15 after a seven-minute break. Motion by Sarah. Second. Second by Keaton. All in favor say aye. 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 You like
executive session. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So motion. Motion by Sarah. Second. Second by Keith. All in favor say aye. Aye. Aye.